Romeo and Juliet, Act Two, Scene Four. Enter Benvolio and Mercutio. <sighs> Where the devil should this Romeo be? Came he not home tonight? Well, not to his father's. I spoke with his man. <sighs> Why, that same pale, hard-hearted wench, that Rosaline, torments him so, they will sure run mad. Well, Tybalt, the kinsman's old Capulet, hath sent a letter to his father's house. <laughs> a challenge on my life. Romeo will answer it. <laughs> Any man that can write may answer a letter. Nay, he will answer the letter's master, how he dares being dared. Oh, alas, poor Romeo. He's already dead, stabbed with a white wench's black eye, run through the ear with a love song, the very pin of his heart cleft with the blind bull boy's butt shaft. And is he a man to encounter Tybalt? Why, what's Tybalt? More than a prince of cats, I can tell you. Oh, he's the courageous captain of compliments. He fights as you sing prick song. He keeps time, distance, proportion. He rests the minimum rests, a one, a two, and a third in your bosom. The very butcher of a silk button. A duelist. A duelist. A gentleman of the very first house, of the first and second cause. The ah, mortal passado. The punto reverso. The hi. The what? The pox of such antic, lisping, affecting phantasms. These new tuners of accents. By Jesu, a very good blade, a very tall man, a very good whore. Why, is not this a lamentable thing, grandsire, that we should be thus afflicted by these strange flies, these fashion mongers, these pardon me's who stand so much on the new form that they cannot sit at ease on an old bench? Oh, their bones, their bones! Oh, here comes Romeo, here comes Romeo! Oh, but but without his robe, <laughs> like a dried herring. Oh, flesh, flesh, how art thou fishified? <laughs> now is he for the numbers that Petrarch flowed in. Laura to his lady was a kitchen wench. Mary, she had a better love to berhyme her. A dido, a dowdy. Cleopatra, a gypsy. Helen and Harrow, hildings and harlots. Thisbe, a gray eye or so. But not to the purpose. Uh, Signor Romeo, bonjour! There's a French salutation for your French slop. You gave us the counterfeit fairly last night. <laughs> Good morrow to you both. But, but what counterfeit did I give you? <sighs> the slip, good sir, the slip. Can you not conceive? Well, pardon, good Mercutio. But my business was great. And in such a case as mine, a man may strain courtesy. <laughs> That's as much as to say, such a case as yours constrains a man to bow in the hams. Meaning, to curtsy? Ah, uh, thou hast most kindly hit it. A most courteous expression. Oh, nay, I'm the very pink of courtesy. Hmm, pink for flower? <laughs> right. Why then is my pump well flowered? <laughs> sure wit. Follow me, this just now, till thou hast worn out thy pump, that, when the single soul of it is worn, the jest may remain, after the wearing solely singular. <laughs> oh, single soul jest, solely singular, for the singleness. <laughs> Come between us, good Benvolio, my wits faint. Oh, swits and spurs, swits and spurs, or I'll cry a match. Uh, nay, if our wits run the wild goose chase, I'm done. For thou hast more of the wild goose in one of thy wits than, I am sure, I have in my old five. Was I with you there for the goose? <laughs> thou was never with me for anything when thou was not there for the goose. I will bite thee by the ear for that jest. Oh, sh 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 good goose, bite not. <laughs> thy wit is a very bitter sweeting. It's a most sharp sauce. And is it not, then, well served into a sweet goose? Oh, here's a wit of chevril that stretches from an inch narrow to an L broad. <laughs> I stretch it out for the word broad, which, added to the goose, proves thee far and wide a broad goose. 
<laughs> Why is not this better than groaning for love? Now art thou sociable, now art thou Romeo, now art thou what thou art, by art as well as by nature. For this driveling love is like a great natural that runs lolling up and down to hide his bauble in a hole. <laughs> stop there, stop there. Oh, thou desirest me to stop my tail against the hair. <laughs> thou would else have made thy tail large. Oh, thou art deceived. I would have made it short, for I was come to the whole depth of my tail and meant indeed to occupy the argument no longer. <laughs> Here's goodly dear. A sail! A sail! <laughs> two, two, a shirt and a smock. Peter! Anon. My fan, Peter. Good Peter, to hide her face, for the fan's the fairer face. Oh, got it tomorrow, gentlemen. Oh, got it good and good gentlewoman. What? Is it good in? Oh, tis no less, I tell ye, for the body hand of the dial is now upon the prick of noon. Oh, out upon you. What a man are you? Oh, one gentlewoman that God hath made himself to mar. By my troth, it is well said, for himself to mar, quoth they. Gentlemen, can any of you tell me where I may find young Romeo? I can tell you, but young Romeo will be older when you have found him than he was when you saw him. I'm the youngest by that name, for fault of a worse. Oh, you say well. Oh, yea, is the worst well? Very well took, in faith, wisely, wisely. If ye be he, sir, I desire some confidence with you. <laughs> she will indict him to some supper. Abod, 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 so ho! What hast thou found? <laughs> no hair, sir, unless a hair, sir, in a Lenten pie that's something stale and poor ere it be spent. An old hair whore and an old hair whore is a very good neat invent. But a hair that is horse is too much for a score when a whore's hair it be spent. <laughs> Romeo, will you come to your father's? Will to dinner thither? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I will follow you. Farewell, ancient lady. Lady, 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 lady. I pray you, sir, what saucy merchant was this that was so full of his ropery? A gentleman nurse that loves to hear himself talk, and will speak more in a minute than he'll stand to in a month. And to speak anything against me, I'll take him down, and a word lustier than he is, and twenty such jacks. And if I cannot, I'll find those that shall. Scurvy knave. And I am none of his flirt girls. I'm none of his scheme mates. And thou must stand by, too, and suffer every knave to use me at his pleasure. Oh, I saw no man use you at his pleasure. If I had, my weapon should quickly have been out. I warrant you. I dare draw as soon as another man if I see occasion and good quarrel and the law on my side. Woo! Now, afore God, I am so vexed that every part about me quivers. Scurvy knave. Pray you, sir, a word. And as I told you, my young lady bid me inquire you out. What she bid me say, I will keep to myself, but first let me tell ye, if you should lead her to a fool's paradise, as they say, it were a very gross kind of behavior, as they say, for a gentlewoman is young, and therefore, if you should deal double with her, truly, it were an ill thing to be offered to any gentlewoman, and a very weak dealing. Nurse, commend me to thy lady and mistress, I protest unto thee. Good heart, and in faith, I will tell her as much. Lord, Lord, she will be a joyful woman. What will thou tell her, nurse? Thou does not mark me. I will tell her, sir, that you do protest, which, as I take it, is a gentlemanlike offer. Bid her devise some means to come to shrift this afternoon, and there she shall at Friar Lawrence's cell be shrived and married. Here, for thy pains. No, truly, sir, not a penny. Go to, I say you shall. This afternoon, sir? She shall be there. And stay, good nurse, behind the abbey wall. Within this hour my man shall be with thee, and bring thee cords made like a tackled stair, which to the high-top gallon of my joy must be my convoy in the secret night. 
farewell, be trusty, and I'll quit thy pains. Farewell, commend me to thy mistress. Oh, now God in heaven bless thee. Hark you, sir. Why sayest thou, my dear nurse? Is your man secret? Did you ne'er hear say, two may keep counsel, putting one away? I warrant thee, my man's as true as steel. Well, sir, my mistress is the sweetest lady. Oh, Lord, Lord, when t'was a little prating thing. Oh, there's a nobleman in town, one Paris, that would fain lay knife abroad. But she, good soul, had as lief see a toad, a very toad, as see him. I anger her sometimes, and tell her that Paris is the proper man. But I'll warrant you, when I say so, she looks as pale as any clout in the Virgil world. Doth not Rosemary and Romeo both begin with a letter? I nurse, what of that? Both with an R. Ah, mocker, that's the dog's name. R is for the... No, I know it begins with some other letter. And she hath the prettiest sententious of it, of you and Rosemary, that it would do you good to hear it. Commend me to thy lady. Aye, a thousand times. Peter! Anon? Before and a pace.